Just like previous Diablo games, most likely unique items will be much sought after when Diablo 4 comes out in June, since they oftentimes allow unique ways of augmenting your build and changing things. In some cases, they might even be considered best in slot for the particular build that you are putting together. Now, Blizzard themselves have actually revealed quite a few of these unique items for us, but most of the information that we're going to be looking at in this video and the follow-up ones to this will also be based on data mined information. Generally speaking, uniques come in two different flavors. You have class-specific uniques, which focus on specific skills within said class. And then, of course, you have non-class-specific uniques, which don't necessarily focus on skills, but rather some other mechanics or things that are let's say universal to all of the classes now today we're going to be looking at all of these ones the non-class specific ones that have been data mined and that have been revealed and i just want to add on one last thing of course we have to bear in mind that we will need to progress into world tier 3 to be able to get these items to start dropping for us most of the uniques in this list are actually returning uniques from previous diablo games so it's entirely likely that if you have a favorite from one of your previous diablo games then it will most likely also feature here but starting us off right off the bat we have our dariel's visage which is a unique helm and this has some really good stats on it uh, it gives you all stats it gives attack speed lifesteal and poison resistance and it's unique aspect says that it focuses on the lucky hit mechanic of course so you have to have a skill that procs a lucky hit and then there's up to a 10 to 20 percent chance to trigger a poison over that applies a poisoning damage over five seconds to enemies in the area now if you're able to get a skill that has a relatively high chance of causing lucky hits then this is of course going to give you a fantastic way to just blanket the area with additional aoe and I certainly like the fact that we have some really, really powerful stats on this helm in the case of it actually giving you attack speed, lifesteal and all stats, which is pretty, pretty damn good. Next up is Doombringer, which is a unique one handed scythe. This gives us critical strike damage and then you have core skill damage, damage, lucky hit chance to heal that rolls on it, as well as maximum life. Now, this also has an aspect that focuses on lucky hit, and this says that up to a 7, sorry, 0.7% chance to deal shadow damage to surrounding enemies and reduce their damage done by 20% for 3 seconds. So, uh, super powerful, let's say, rolled up double effect here on a very low chance of actually happening. But the main thing here being that you will actually cause a shadow damage AoE around you, which is cool, but then also debuff the enemies that are hit by that AoE, debuff their damage for 3 seconds by 20%. This is not bad at all, and since it is a one-hander, of course, bear in mind that this can be dual-wielded by something like the Barbarian. I'm, however, not saying that this should be a weapon in the Barbarian slot. I don't think it's that fantastic, but nonetheless, that's Doombringer. Next up, we have Fists of Fate, which is a unique set of gloves. This is loaded for bear on the lucky hit chances here, rolling with lucky hit chance to heal, lucky hit chance to restore primary resource, lucky hit immobilize chance, and lucky hit daze chance. So essentially, anytime you use uh, a skill and a lucky hit procs, then there's a chance for all of these things to essentially fire off. Now, your attacks randomly deal between 1% and then going all the way up to 300% of their normal damage. So this is really like a dice roll kind of unique. Uh, I think these items can be fun because they can produce, you know, ridiculous, you know, massive hits all of a sudden while also sometimes just literally doing like no damage to the enemy. Um, and I think in situations where you can increase the attack speed of your character very very high while using a skill that has a relatively good chance of lucky hitting then this can still be a decent unique glove nonetheless unfortunately it doesn't have any other stats i mean it literally has four lucky hits on it so i mean there's nothing else on you but this will be something fun to play around with at the very least on like a frenzy bob or something like that and just essentially see how often you can get this to basically fire off then we're looking at Frostburn, which is also a unique glove, and this comes with critical strike chance, cold damage, freeze duration, and a lucky hit modifier here that says chance to restore primary resource, which, you know, can be like mana or essence or whatever. The aspect on here says that lucky hit up to a 15 to 25% chance to freeze enemies for two seconds. Now, having the ability to essentially freeze enemies let's say you get the better roll of this which is the 25 percent chance but again based off of lucky hits so 
you, when you start out with a 25% chance that there's a four, you know, one out of four chance, but then you also have to factor in the lucky hit chance of this happening. Uh, this seems really good, but again, you're going to need a very high lucky hit coefficient here in terms of trying to get that. And uh, I think there's going to be a lot of focus in Diablo 4 since lucky hit is, first of all, a new mechanic in the game. I think there's going to be a lot of focus for people to try and see how they can squeeze the most you know functionality out of lucky hit to try and get their lucky hit as high as possible and then start essentially loading their gear with as many lucky hit effects as possible and then see what they can do with that well, this can definitely play into that for sure then in our i guess is our fifth item is harlequin crest aka shaco i think it's entirely possible that this will be the most sought after unique just due to it being just so damn good no matter which class you're using because of the stats on it as well as the actual aspect so first of all this comes with maximum life which is great cooldown reduction which is phenomenal crafting material find is just you know a way for you to essentially get more crafting materials out in the wild and then all stats you know benefiting your strength your decks and you know int and you know all of that and then last but not least, as mentioned, a phenomenal aspect here, essentially saying that you gain a percentage damage reduction. I believe, I don't know how high this goes. I've seen some actual screenshots, or at the very least, the ones which were shown by Blizzard, where I think it capped out at 15%, which is, again, no, that, you know, 15% is, is pretty, pretty good. Uh, if this can go higher, that's even more sick. And then, of course, in addition, two ranks to all of your skills. So every single skill that you have equipped and, and that, that you're using will get plus two to their ranks. And that's just pretty damn good. Harlequin Crest is the shit and most likely something that people will be celebrating when they get it to drop. Then we have Melted Heart of Selig, which is a unique amulet. Now, this comes with resistance to all elements. It, again, also gives all stats core skill damage damage while healthy meaning that as long as you are above 80 percent of your hp you will be dealing more damage and then it also gives you additional resource regeneration which is always good uh very very few builds uh do not use resources whichever resources they might be vigorously so this can definitely help you now its aspect says that you gain a hundred percent of your maximum resource so you know if you have a hundred mana now you have 200 in addition when you take damage it drains three to six of that resource for every one percent of life you would have lost instead so in a way you then gain a mana shield or an essence shield or whatever your primary resource is and becomes a secondary life bar to you um and uh, this can be good in cases where let's say for example you are not like i'm thinking like this could probably be really good in a thorns build on a barbarian because a thorns build on a barbarian your secondary way of killing enemies might be bleed and so therefore you might not be tapping out on your your uh you know your main resource the entire time you you might actually be experiencing situations where you have too much of it and in this case this will be a fantastic way to just increase your survivability you know even more then we have mother's embrace which is a unique ring this comes with fire resistance and cold resistance so that's two elements covered from a resistance perspective good stuff and then we also have critical strike chance on here we have critical strike damage overpower damage and core skill damage so just offloading a huge amount of damage on you i think this will probably be really good for a build that's looking for a way to just increase their critical strike chance and critical strike damage straight off the top and let's say for example that build also then leverages a way to cause overpowers which further on tap into critical strike chance and critical strike damage i'm thinking like druids for example this can be really really good there and then if we factor in the aspect as well here which says that if a core skill hits five or more enemies are um, 20 to 40 percent of the resources refunded now again looking at like for instance the barbarian you have upheaval or we can look at the druid where we have landslide landslide is a very expensive core skill and generally speaking druids have an issue with one of the biggest hurdles they have to account, overcome at the beginning uh, at low levels is trying to spend their spirit as most efficiently as possible and also stacking their spirit as much as they can so that they can fire off as many of these core skills as possible now this certainly solves that issue because a lot of the core skills for the druid for instance are considered aoe skills or skills that can hit multiple enemies so this can definitely be good there uh, i'd surely try to work this into a druid build in some way and see if it helps 
Then we have Penitent Greaves, which is a unique set of boots. Now, this says that Dodge Chance while evading is pretty good. Well, it's one of the stats. Then we also have Movement Speed, which is generally something that I believe can roll on boots and on amulets. So cool. We have that on here. We have Crowd Control Duration. Uh, I believe Crowd Control Duration means, I suppose this means that your crowd control lasts longer but i could also understand it as that the duration of crowd control on you is less this is interesting i guess we'll have to have to see um if anybody in the comments knows which one of those two it is go on and you know let me know reduce duration of enemy slow and then we also have cold resistance on you now the aspect on this says that you leave behind a trail of frost that chills enemies you deal 70 10 percent more damage to chilled enemies i like this uh i think of something like for example uh let's say whirlwind barbarian uh guys i'm gonna be using barbarian a lot i'm like in a barbarian state of mind so it's pretty much the only thing that i'm thinking about <laughs> since it's gonna be my main as soon as the game comes out but i'm thinking about whirlwind barbarian where you essentially you move through the enemies and you you know like spin them up and then this is just gonna leave this chill behind which is gonna slow those enemies because that's what chills does and then if anything survives your original pass with the whirlwind when you then double back you're going to be able to deal more damage to them because they're chilled so or you can just like sort of like spin in a circle then anything that wanders into that circle you know basically gets annihilated then we have razor plate now i've seen some weird screenshots of this i actually what i was able to get this item to drop two or three times during the beta um but not this item i was able to get the legendary aspect that says gain x thorns just on your armor i was able to get that to drop but the amounts were never like that super high but i've seen some i guess data mine screenshots of razor plate where it has thousands of thorns mentioned so i don't know if those were doctored or any way like that but if razor plate if the only thing that razor plate has on it it has no other stats it has nothing it just literally has this aspect and it says you know gain ten thousand thorns i'll still fucking take it that's still really really good considering if you want to build like a thorns build or something like that yeah you're gonna lose out on a bunch of other like sub stats and things like that that you could have had on your chest but man oh man and like being able to i mean i think i capped out at level 25 on the betas i think i capped out at like a thousand six hundred or a thousand seven hundred thorns uh, once i had everything farmed as best as i could in the time that we could during the betas um and then being able to just add on like a couple of thousand on top of that mm -mm -mm. yeah that just it sounds good but okay uh next we have ring of starlit skies this is a unique ring and it gives you lightning resistance and shadow resistance so again covering two of the the possible elements there we get all stats we get lucky hit chance which this this will be a thing that when people previously when we were going through some of the other uniques i was mentioning that you know some players would most likely try to find ways to increase the efficiency of their lucky hits the chance of them happening and also just in general you know uh, buff that in some way and on your rings you can you can roll lucky hit chance which increases the lucky hit chance of whichever skill that you're using by that you know amount um, so this has obviously got that on it then damage to crowd controlled enemies which is cool a core skill damage and then the aspect on here says that each consecutive core skill cast reduces the resource cost of your next core skill by five to ten percent up to a maximum of 30 so if you roll the one for instance for instance that rolls 10 percent, which is the best one then on your first cast after the original one you're going to get a 10 percent reduction then a 20 then a 30 and then it caps out again going back to like something like if you're using a barbarian and you go upheaval 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 or you go druid landslide 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 and it doesn't just have to be those two any other class that essentially dumps core skills onto enemies the ability to in one mana pool cast five of these versus normally being able to cast three is huge because these are generally the skills that you stack your damage onto these are the ones which are going to really be the, the the heavy hitters of your build so this can also be pretty damn good um, i'm actually quite excited for this ring then we have temerity which is a unique pants and this says that your potion also briefly grants movement speed i really like that effect i like little things in your build that can suddenly cause you to have some movement speed it's things that you can do to essentially cover a distance faster or to get yourself out of you know shit that you might be in and this certainly covers you know that you know 
that's a possibility then also we have potion charges on here which increases of course the amount of times you can use your potion potion drop rate we have a lucky hit chance to heal and we have healing this pants is all about keeping you alive that's basically the point here the aspect on here also says that effects that heal you beyond a hundred percent life grant you a barrier up to x percentage of your maximum life that lasts for 30 seconds this is really really good just because of the fact that once we start getting into world tier 3 world tier 4 and some of the more difficult contact we weren't able to see this in the betas yet because there wasn't really anything that was taxing us heavily in the betas but once we get to the point where we cannot just be brute forcing our way through content and we need to start worrying about damage mitigation and being able to you know offset some of the damage that's coming into our character then effects like this will definitely start playing in of course we 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 have you know fortify and you know the mechanic behind that essentially giving you a second life bar now consider barrier in a way being like your third life bar or a shield if you think about it that way so if you combine all three of those you know really good max life stacking really good fortify generation and then something like this where basically every time you overheal yourself you also get a barrier that's just going to make a very very tanky and sturdy character and the second last item we have is the butcher's cleaver now i did see people claiming that this dropped during the betas whenever they killed the butcher or at least sometimes when they killed the butcher i think i successfully killed the butcher four times out of the seven times that i you know saw him and i only ever got rings and pants i believe i was never lucky enough to get this cleaver but this is a unique one-handed axe that does damage to healthy enemies meaning like if an enemy is more than 80 percent of its hp so it's a brand new enemy something like that you're going to deal additional damage to them this also deals damage to crowd controlled enemies critical strike damage and critical strike chance against injured enemies meaning enemies that are below 30 percent of their hp and then also damage to these injured enemies so this is just very much like a bully weapon uh i like the fact that it's a one-handed axe which means still means again that you can dual wield this and this has a lucky hit aspect that mentions when you critically strike an enemy you have a hundred percent chance to fear and slow them by 40 to 75 percent chance sorry uh 42 uh 40 to 75 percent for four seconds this is the hundred percent chance to fear and slow them is huge if you get something that if you can get to a, a case where let's say one out of every eight hits that you do a uh, lucky hit and let's say um let's say you get your critical strike chance up high enough that let's say one out of every four hits that you hit is a critical strike which is not impossible at all at all and then you get a high enough attack speed this can become a weapon that essentially locks down whatever you're fighting because you're going to be proccing this effect so often that the other enemy uh, whether that is a human being which most likely will have you know less chance of being cc this much but still cc-able or if you're fighting like a monster or a boss or something like that and and that thing is susceptible to being feared and slowed some will obviously you know be immune to these kinds of status effects then you're gonna have a weapon here that's gonna allow you to essentially control the fight and just never take damage because in those four seconds that this enemy is feared and slow you could just hammer away on them and most likely during that time you could potentially proc this again or you proc it shortly after it falls off but yeah this is this is pretty good uh, i think this will be fairly powerful i would imagine especially given the right circumstance and in the right pull and then the last item in our list here of the non-class specific uniques is the grandfather a unique two-hander sword with critical strike damage damage maximum life all stats and ignoring durability loss on it now its aspect mentions that increases your critical strike damage by 60 to 100 percent the other properties of this weapon can roll higher than normal now this is this is pretty pretty good and i can think of several cases where this weapon can be very good uh, if your bolt focuses on critical strike chance then you will also be focusing on increasing your critical st critical strike damage as much as possible so that you can capitalize on all those juicy crits 
and this gives a on one item this gives a huge amount of critical strike damage usually two to three items is what you need to get something like a hundred percent this is off of one item but then if you also look at the fact that this the other stats that roll on here like for instance all stats maximum life damage and critical strike damage which rolls again can also roll higher than normal so if the thresholds for this for instance on a two-handed sword for example the maximum life their percentage is 10 percent then this could potentially roll it up to 20 or 25 so it just means that you are getting a huge a huge amount of bonus something like two to three items worth of bonus off of one and in the case of again the barbarian and i swear to god i'm gonna stop fucking complaining or rather i'm gonna stop just using the the barbarian as an example soon one of these days is that in the case of the barbarian where you have the arsenal system and you're able to equip four weapons two two-handers and two one-handers this is like an auto shoe in for one of those two two-handers because this is just too good not to put on because of the amount of value that you get out of this item and that right there is the list i believe these are all of the uniques the non-class specific uniques that have been data mined for the game it's entirely possible that there could be more when the full game launches and of course we'll only know that when we get the full game in our hands speaking about getting the full game in our hands i am currently running a giveaway on this channel where i'm giving away three copies of the base version of diablo 4 on the platform of your choice and the only thing you have to do to enter this giveaway is in the description of this video there's a link to another video a short one explaining to you a google form that you need to fill in and all you need to do is fill that in and then you're in the draw for this on the 1st of june live on a stream on this channel i will be pulling the three winners from that and i sincerely hope you can be one of the lucky ones to get that i also hope you have a fantastic morning afternoon and evening wherever you are in the world until next video, fucking cheers.